All right, next up, Jackie Brown, which I, I think I've seen twice. I saw it once right when it came out and then maybe once since, and both times I saw it, I was not really a big fan. I found it to be, um, you know, kind of fine. It was just kind of like, yeah, it was okay. It was calm, you know, it was, it was okay, it was good, it was fine. I don't know, it just didn't really win me over. So I was really looking forward to rewatching this one. I was like, all right, man, this is gonna be the time. The third time's a charm. Jackie Brown's gonna finally hit for me. It's a Quentin Tarantino movie. The guy can do no wrong for me. And so <clears throat> I threw it on and maybe like the first like 30 minutes or so, 45 minutes, I was like, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this. And then as it just kind of went on, I, like usual, kind of just started being like, okay, this is kind of dragging for me. Okay, like I'm not really all that invested in this. Okay, like, here's the thing about this movie. I feel like this movie is, like, it's like Quentin Tarantino trying to refine his work and not make it so flashy and edgy and just kind of make a really um, simple and straightforward movie. And I don't know, I feel like, most of Tarantino's charm is missing from this movie. It feels like it feels like a movie I watch and I think that kind of feels like Tarantino. It feels like this guy was inspired by Tarantino but just couldn't nail Tarantino. That's how this film feels to me. It's not a bad movie and I'm and it has its fans. Like I've got some people when I when I said I was watching this like I fucking love this movie, which is great. And I'm not saying it's a bad movie or that I hate it or anything like that. It's just, A, I find it to be extremely simplistic, which I don't really feel like Tarantino's movies are all that elaborate and extremely in-depth with their plots. I think their the dialogue is extremely, like, extremely, extremely fucking... Um, well done, talented, just insane. But I feel like the stories, like just the basic plot elements are very basic. Like they have a goal, they go for that goal, and it either they get it or they don't, the end. Like there's nothing really more to it than that. And with this movie, this one is even more so just very straightforward. It's, you know, for the most part, it's told very linear um, and the characters are fine they're they're fine they're good I just don't I, I rarely laughed I rarely had that Quentin Tarantino feel coming through me where I was like yeah I fucking love this and I love that and I love this character the first 30 minutes where De Niro and Samuel Jackson are sitting on the couch and Bridget Fonda's there and he's watching, he's showing them the gun commercials on the TV and all of this. What I think may have happened here is that this is the only time that Quentin Tarantino has adapted someone else's work. Like this is a book and I think that he was trying to, st I don't know how true he was to the source material I've never read the book but this is the only film of his where I don't feel like it's very Quentin Tarantino and knowing that he worked on this off of a book that isn't his makes sense to me because that's not Tarantino and I, I get that this was supposed to be an homage to you know uh, black exploitation films and whatnot but I didn't find it to be all that interesting. I didn't find it to be all that thrilling. Like I wasn't on the edge of my seat when, when they were trying to um, make the exchange where who was gonna get it, who wasn't, who was double crossing who, who wasn't. It all just kind of easily played out. It's kind of just like, all right, she takes the bag. Okay, he shoots her, he shoots him. The bag's there, he comes for the money, the comes, cops come out and they shoot him and she 
drives away. The end. It, it's just, it's very, very straightforward, very basic. There's no twists, there's no turns, there's no just, it's just kind of like everything is at face value. And as I said, like, that's fine because Tarantino isn't usually the filmmaker that's going to put tons of twists into his movies. They're not going to have some M. Night Shyamalan kind of fucking thing. But because I didn't find the characters as intriguing as it, like anything, like a Pulp Fiction or Reservoir Dogs or anything, I found myself to just kind of be bored at times. I was just kind of sitting there like, okay, okay. It's a competently well-made movie, but I just find the characters to be fairly lackluster. And with the talent on hand, with Samuel Jackson, with... You know, Robert De Niro and Michael Keaton and you know Robert Foster and of course you know uh, Pam Greer herself, Jackie Brown and Bridget Fonda and Chris Tucker and there's talent across the board. There's there's tons of stuff going on here. But guys, I only have a third of a page of notes in almost a three-hour movie. That's insane. I'll watch an hour and a half movie and I'll have a page and a half sometimes. And I don't even have a third of a page on a three-hour movie. And I'll kind of go through them. I think the title sequence of her like going across the, uh, the little um, escalator there is, is cool. It's, it's a good song. It's it, like the way it's shot, all that stuff. It's cool. Yeah, it's, it's a fun thing. Um, and, you know, I, I, we get a foot shot here because, of course, Quentin Tarantino has a foot fetish. And uh, we know that um, Samuel Jackson's character in this is, is a gun dealer and he's going to, you know, he's trying to get his money out of Mexico and she's going to do this thing and the cops come and they get her and she kind of like is double crossing, triple crossing. She has like a plan with everybody, but ultimately she's just out to get it for herself. Um, we've got uh, Michael Keaton's character, Ray Nicolette is also in a movie called Out of Sight with uh, George Clooney and Jennifer Lopez. Great movie. I actually prefer that movie to this movie, um, no doubt. I really enjoy the shit out of the movie. Highly recommend it. But he plays the same character from this movie in that movie, and that's got to be one of the only times that's ever happened. Um, and uh, freaking Tommy from Valley Girls in here. He's in a lot of Tarantino movies. He plays Buck in, in Kill Bill, which I'm watching next. I'm really looking for. I love Kill Bill, so I'll get back to what feels like Tarantino for me. We got Sid Haig here as the judge, um, which is interesting to see him play a straight role. I can't think of much that I've ever seen him in where he does play a straight role like that. Um and Robert Foster's character in this is good, and it's 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 a very competent movie. The characters are all good, just with wanting something at Tarantino level, it's you know it's just not there for me. He has a love at first sight kind of thing with Jackie Brown, which really just doesn't make any sense at the end of this movie when he doesn't go with her because he's talking about how he just wants to retire anyways and he's done with it. He's been in it for 19 years and all this stuff and it's like, why isn't you go? Why is she even offers? It's not like he'd be forcing, imposing or anything. She's like, you want to come with me? And he's like, no. And she even kisses him. So it's not like he can be like, oh, well, she's not into me. I guess, like, I don't understand why he didn't go. But I don't know. I, I guess Quentin's not going to have the happy ending where they got, I don't know. Um, I do love the line where Robert De Niro and Bridget Fonda and she's like, you want to fuck? And he's like, uh-huh. And three minutes later, he's done. But he just got out of prison, cut the guy a break. Um, and she also, when he shoots her in the parking lot, definitely one of my favorite scenes in the entire damn movie. Um, and, you know, as I said, she's just kind of trying to play everybody. And the relationship between De Niro and Jackson's great. I like how he tricks Tucker into getting into the trunk with a shotgun. It's very obvious. You don't even think for a second he's actually doing anything like that. But as I said, this movie's just really, really res like reserved. It's just kind of like long, a long, far away shot of him shooting him in the trunk, and the dialogue is like really dialed back. It's nowhere near as fun or funny. 
Um, she puts on a pantsuit in here, which I'm a big fan of women in pantsuits. Uh, we got a real phone number when they give out phone numbers, which I always like to hear. Um, and I don't understand why he wouldn't bring a bag to switch the money out. That makes no sense to me. Like, why would he carry it out in a bag that looks exactly like the bag she had when he knows that there's ATF agents all over the fucking place? That just doesn't make any sense. Just go in there with something and throw it into a duffel bag and come out. Like, just silly to me that he would come out with the exact same bag. Um, and, yeah, that's really all I got to say. I don't, I don't really have a lot to say about this one. So, a three-hour movie, almost, for that. But, anyway, guys, I look forward to going to Kill Bill. Sorry this one was pretty short, but... I had I said all I had to say. All right guys, adios.